All right, my friends, today we're gonna to be talking about an area in real estate that's near and dear to my heart because it is the area that I got my start in, student rental investing or student housing. Let's roll the intro. All right, I know what you're thinking. Student housing is scary. That's what I thought when I first started too, and it can be. No, listen, there is that connotation when it comes to student housing that it is just a dangerous and high risk game where you have students trashing the place. And you know, if you're not careful, that can be true. But the reality is student housing is a bona fide area in real estate and there's companies that have built their business models around student housing. And some of the unique aspects of student housing is really what I wanna get into today. So I'm gonna talk about some of the benefits of student housing and how some of the returns you can get are even better comparatively to other areas in residential and commercial real estate. Number one, despite tuition increasing in the United States and Canada and other areas in Europe, there still seems to be a great demand for undergraduate and graduate degrees. So even though those tuition prices are rising, we see student enrollment continue to increase and some of it in certain states and certain countries is actually record breaking. I believe in the UK 2018 and 2019 were record breaking application years for undergraduates. So we're still seeing a huge demand and as we know with other areas of real estate, job growth, demographics, in this case when it comes to student housing, that's really your proxy, your application and continued application for growth in a certain area or around a certain university. Number two, universities oftentimes can't even keep up with the demand. If you've gone to university recently or in the recent past, you realize that the actual housing on campus really is only offered many times to first year students. That wasn't always the case. For a lot of universities, that was the accommodation for students. But because the actual supply is just not available on campus, we're seeing developers come in and build purpose-built student apartments for students outside of campus. And we're seeing that all across the country as well in other markets um, across the pond. All right, you hear the term recession proof thrown around all the time and sometimes it's valid sometimes it's not. Student housing actually is a genuine area in my opinion that is as close to recession proof as possible and in many areas it actually has the opposite effect that during a recession more people do apply. When job prospects don't look good for people that are about to enter the labor market they see staying in school and perhaps getting an undergraduate or undergraduate student getting a master's degree as their best available option. So you still see that demand there even during a recession. When I first started investing, it was 07, 08, and that was all student housing. We really saw no dip in vacancy in the student markets that we were in, despite dips in vacancy in the market abroad. One nice thing here is that you usually don't have 100% loss of income. And what I mean by that is when you have, for example, a single family house rented out to one family, if that family leaves, you're now down at zero income, zero percent to a hundred percent that's a big swing with student housing for instance the first property I bought had five students they were each paying something like 500 or 550 dollars and when you had one student leave you know you had 80 percent out of a hundred in terms of your actual vacancy not ideal but not as bad as losing your full income and there were times where I had student housing that had eight students and you lose two or three of them at one time and then fill that spot a few months later but you still don't have the big whiteboat down to 0%. Given the demand in student housing, we're seeing actually a lot of turnkey student investments. And what that is, is you'll see developers buy large apartments or condominiums and either sell the condominiums or rent out the actual apartment units. In that case, you can actually purchase smaller units within a larger complex and have a relatively turnkey investment where they manage it and that's part of their business, like I was mentioning earlier, and you really don't have to think about anything. And the great thing with these places is they're often built concrete based. A lot of these condos are concrete. So the actual amount of damage a student can do in there is relatively limited. I heard one investor say they're built like prisons and the funny part is they are. So if I told you there was a guaranteed investment, you'd probably think I'm crazy. But student rentals are actually one of the closest things you do get to guaranteed income. I can't remember how many times I'd have parents guarantee, actually sign guarantees for their students. It's not uncommon in student areas. And the reality is, I have actually, in my student rentals, have seen less delinquency than any other area in real estate. And I think the reality is when somebody's going to school, they're going to school for a purpose. And a lot of times it's the parents that are paying. Not all the time, but I find when and the students are the ones actually paying, they're even more prone to make sure that that rent payment goes in on the first of the month. 
Now there's another one here for any of the states that have rent control. Um, and rent control, I mean a specific time where you can't actually raise rent until you have a new tenant in. Now that can be such a pain if you have long-term tenants that are paying such a low amount where you can never mark to market as, as they would say. And with student rental investing, what's great is that you will have a new crop of students every two, three years, four years, where you're always gonna be able to mark to market if you're in one of those states or in your one of those provinces where you have rent control. You're always gonna be able to get new students in because they finish their degree or they go work in that area or they go back to their hometown or home uh, city. So that's another great aspect that I feel a lot of people that are in rent control areas don't see and don't realize and they should and it's a great benefit. So what I'll say in summary when it comes to student rentals, they are a great investment and sometimes you can get some of the best returns with this area. Now you should be careful. There is like any investment risk associated with it, but it's all about in our business trying to find where that risk is and being able to contain it. And when it comes to student rentals, I feel a lot of people look at it and turn away immediately because there's just this bad connotation that comes with students and housing. And it really doesn't have to be that way. And if you really don't wanna manage yourself, there's always third party management. And another beauty about student rentals is that if you have an area, a university college town, that's booming with students, and development, what else is there? There's usually property management companies that are full service management companies that know how to manage students and do the administration, which can be a little bit more laborious when it comes to students because there's a bit more turnover. Anyways, I hope that was helpful. If you like this video, subscribe below, hit the like button, and if there's any future topics that you want me to cover or go into more detail with, let me know and I'd be happy to do that. Take care.